Hi there, welcome to LearnClickQ.com. In this tutorial, we'll uh, create and uh, use dynamic calendar in ClickQ. There are instances when your end users need to uh, have a custom date range functionality in ClickQ app. Um, and uh, normally, Master Calendar provides only a, a weekly monthly or yearly view of your data set. So at the end of this tutorial you will know how you can allow your user to select start and an end date and dynamically render the data set set for that particular date range. So let's begin. I for saving time um in in um, making it most practical to to complete this within uh, the short span I, I have already created a small app and this app has uh, information about salesperson territory and orders um, and the data model is fairly simple as you see uh, we have three tables here what we'll do is we'll add a calendar first and then um, we will add several uh, variables to show uh, and to create actually the the master dynamic calendar. So let's first create the uh, the master calendar. In order to do that, I'm going to pull a QVD that 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 has been built um, to um, create master calendar. So I'm I'm going to add a tab and let's call it calendar. Let's uh, move it to the last position. I'm gonna go and grab the calendar QED. It looks pretty good. Um, it has data from 1990 all the way to 2010 or 20. So, say finish. That's nice. Now. In order to uh, to create a natural join, uh, we will use the order date um, column in alias um, the date column in calendar. All right, so that's that's all we need here. At this point, I'm going to reload. Alright, so now we have a calendar, and as you see, it's joined by order date here. So let's build a calendar object in this this sheet, and for that, uh, I I only need month and year. So I'm gonna grab year first and month. All right. Um, first thing we notice here is that this year shows a lot of years that that are not used. As you see, um, the ones that are in gray um, have no data at all. So, in order to remove those years from the calendar to make it more concise, what I'm going to do is <clears throat> add a lapkip. Uh, To this load statement, and uh, we're going to refer to the order table. Let's call it calendar. All right. With this, it will only render month and year from the calendar that's associated with with orders. Let's reload here.
and now as you see it, it it only shows four years um that 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 looks much cleaner now I'm going to turn off caption and change this single column here so this will allow me to render this calendar this month I'm sorry nicely okay so that's there we'll do the same here um I wonder if I can Okay, sorry, never mind. Turn off caption. All right, that's that. So we have nice little functioning calendar here that we can use to to render um, data set. Uh, associated with each year and month so that that's nice it's working I can, I can select several months you see it's displaying um, the relevant data uh, so I have all this but what if I wanted to show only uh, data between certain date range for instance from February two, uh, 26, 2006 through, let's say, April 2000, uh, April uh, 30th, 2006. Um, and, and, you know, again, I can select this month, but if, you, if I select February, it's going to show all uh, records in month of February. So for, for that reason, what well, we will create a... Um, a dynamic calendar which which will allow us to pick from and to date and it'll render data within that range so the first step to to create a dynamic calendar is to create two variables so first variable will hold the from date and the second will hold the to date and then we will um, associate both variables to the to the field order date because that's the the field that we that we will use to drive um, the data set with these variables and then the the last step is to to cr create a uh, where condition and I'll show you how we do that in the um, uh, by using a trigger in the uh, document setting. And and and, um, uh, and the very last step will be to to render nicely in a calendar object. So let's create the uh, two variables first. To do that, you go in and and create two input boxes. So first variable we're going to call it v from date. Okay, and it's important here to make sure that the the format of of this date matches with the date format of the column that's driving this which is order date so we're going to use m mm as you see here it's 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 a month um date and year so let's do mmdd So that's that's nice right here. I'm gonna copy this in. Okay. So let's change this to um, V two date. Um, 
actually. Okay, well, um, go here. Okay, so let's remove this. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna create uh, another one. And we'll just make sure the the format matches the date format matches, which is very important with the uh, with the order date here. So we have two variables now, um, and again they're just variables. Uh, they're not associated with anything, so they're they're not helpful at this point. Uh, in order to make them tie with the order date, the next step is to go in to setting and document property now uh, we will create a trigger and trigger will be on chain so whenever we input new value uh, this trigger should uh, act, get activated so I think for the prom first thing is to clear any date selections that way uh, if user selected any other fields prior to this we want to make sure that we start with uh, with no selections on that op on this sheet. So we'll just use clear all as first. The next will be uh, the the select in field, and here the field is going to be the order date. Again, remember we're trying to tie this variable with the uh, order date because that's the drive driving field and in the search string which is kind of keen to where clause in select statement uh, should have the the, the condition um, for this variable or the date range um, for, for this variable to hold and that is uh, really the the uh, you know the range between the start or from date and to date. So to do that, we just use equal, greater than equal, and with m percent we from from date again m percent, and then it's going to be less than or equal. I'm sorry. And percent we to date. So this is very simple. Um, from date is the the lower bound of the date range. To date the upper bound, and uh, essentially this variable will hold dates between those two. Two, two uh, variables. So that's that. We're going to use the same one for the next one. So we're going to copy it. So that's there. Now I'm going to go to two and add this. Looks good. So now they're associated with, with, with order date. So as I said before, if I want to uh, reduce the the date range down from 26th of February 06 to April 30th 06, all I need to do is go in and say 02 26 2006 to 04 30 2006 as we do that it's rendering top 10 values based on that rate range so as you see now it's rendering 
top 10. Uh, well, I used between those two dates. And, um, of course, you know, the, the values in between have changed, as you see here. So this works, and it's fine, but to, to make it user-friendly, since, you know, your users may not know how to enter uh, these dates or what they mean, uh, it's it's always useful to create calendar objects um, that that they're uh, again very intuitive, easy to use. So next step is to create uh, the calendar object, and once we create that, that's it. So let's for now move this on the side. Okay, and I'm going to create two calendar objects. Okay, so we go in, calendar. And instead of using field, I'm going to use a variable. And uh, of course, the first one's prom date. So that's good enough. Okay, so that's that's here. Okay, and if, if you really wanted um, to... to make it more explicit you can go into caption and say select from date oh sorry so that's first now Go back here and let's change this. The second one is to date. There you have it. Now you have a calendar that that shows um, the lower and upper date ranges. So now I can select and say, you know, I want to select from March uh, 2006. Oh, uh, and I'm sorry here. Let's see, property. So me two thousand six. So it's it's that and say seven. So so it's it's displaying now uh, data set between the date that I selected, which being May of 2006 and April 2007. So there you have it. You have a calendar that allows you to select uh, specific dates. Um, you know, with your calendar, you can always select month and year. Uh, but, but with this, now your users have uh, a much better way to explore data. I hope that you like this, and if so, please um, visit again when I have another video uh, fairly soon. Till then, so long. Take care. Bye-bye.